Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about somebody that's in the news that is creating quite a storm around the U.S. with her concerts. And one of the main reasons why I want to look at her chart is I want to see the talent, the ability to sing, as well as her level of success right now. It has to all be in the stars, right? So who am I talking about but Taylor Swift? Let's take a look at her chart and see what it's all about and why she's in such a popular time of her life. So putting up Taylor Swift's chart, let's look at first, where is her ascendant? The ascendant is what really starts the whole chart. And it really determines where all the planets fall in a chart. So the ascendant, which is based on your birth time, is so very important. Her ascendant sits here in Scorpio. And Scorpio is a very intense and magnetic sign. So you got to admit she's got a great deal of magnetism. And looking at her first house, well, the planet that rules Scorpio is Mars. And Mars is sitting in the first house with the sun. So those two planets are incredibly strong and represent who she is because the first house is you. Now Mars and the sun together, Mars being in Scorpio is so powerful because it is the ruler of Scorpio. So it is it, the ruler of the first and the first and it sits exactly on the ascendant within a one degree that gives her enormous energy stamina ambition drive power and mars and scorpio is intense so everything she does she does with a passion and intensity so the sun is actually the planet that rules leo and leo sits on the 10th house so the 10th house is your career your profession and so the ruler of the 10th going to the first house with mars gives her this great ability for success and in vedic astrology that duo that combination of those two planets the ruler of the 10th with the ruler of the first together in the first house gives her what's called a raja yoga which means the yoga of kings so this is how she has so much power and success just by looking at these two planets in her first house. Now, when I look at performers, entertainers, I always go to the third house. The third house is actually the house of entertainers. And remember the fifth house has representation as performers because it is the third house from the third house. If you go to house number three and count three placements away, three, four, five, you arrive at the fifth house. So those are the two houses that deal with performers and entertainers and talent. So they deal with talent. And she has got Venus Rahu in her third house. Venus is the planet of beauty, charm, grace, and creativity. And being next to Rahu, it is magnified and it is quadrupled or ten tenfold exaggerated. Any planet that Rahu sits next to, it magnifies and multiplies its representation of what that planet is all about. Now, Venus is... Venus and Rahu sit in the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So the third house, the planet that rules the third house is actually Saturn. And if you look at where her Saturn goes, this will make a total bunch of sense. Why? Because the second house is our voice. It's also our ability to make money. So she makes money off her talent her Venus Rahu and with her Venus Rahu, by the way, being in the sign of Capricorn tells me right away, she's a businesswoman. Don't kid yourself. This is about business when you come to Capricorn, but the second house rules the voice. She makes her money and she has her talent 
with her voice, the ruler of the third Saturn sitting in the second house of finances, money, and her voice and her Saturn sits very close to Neptune, which gives us ethereal sense of her voice. Saturn being there in the in Sagittarius in the second house gives her the discipline, the focus to develop and work on her talent of her voice. And with Neptune, it makes it very interesting voice. Mercury is also there in the second house of the voice and money. And Mercury sits very close in between actually Neptune and Uranus, giving this, this different range of qualities with her voice. This is all about a singer, a performer. And when we look to where the ruling planet of the second house, second house is Sagittarius, all these planets sit in Sagittarius. When we look at where the ruler of Sagittarius goes, which is Jupiter, it goes to the eighth house with the moon. And this is vitally important that you understand what the eighth house is. Now the eighth house has a lot of difficult connotations, but don't forget the eighth house is power, big power and big money. Don't ever forget that. It deals with inheritances and money through other people, but it's big, big money. But let me tell you something else about the eighth house that people seem to forget a lot of. This is the house that can deal most with charisma, sexual attraction. Marilyn Monroe, we still talk about her today and she died in 1962. She had the most powerful planets in her eighth house, Mars and Jupiter. And here we have somebody that's got Jupiter moon. That's powerful charisma, magnetism, not to mention she's a Scorpio rising with Sun, Mars, and Scorpio. This woman has magnetism, charisma, and power. People are fascinated with her when you have this and, you know, a sexuality that attracts people. That's eighth house. So the moon rules the ninth and goes to the eighth with Jupiter. I got to tell you, she's got to have a metaphysical side to her with that. Very deep. But the eighth house and the second house are really big money houses. And Mercury, by the fact that it rules the 11th house of great gains, sits in the second house. This is very common when you see a connection between houses two and 11 that you have great sums of money that come to you in life. And not only that, the Mercury being opposed the Jupiter moon, and it rules the 11th house of big money, and the 8th house brings huge amounts of money. She is able to change the economy in different cities that she gives concerts in. This is power. This is money. This is extremes. But don't forget what gives her the greatest talent is that Venus Rahu in the third house. Amazing chart. And even when you look at her chart from the moon, I say look at the charts from Chandra Lagna making the moon the ascendant. This will put that Venus Rahu in the eighth house of charisma. So she's got it no matter where she goes. People are drawn to her, attracted to her. And she works really, really hard. This is a hardworking woman because from Chandra Lagna, the Mar Mars sun goes to the sixth house of work, ambition, and drive. So she's got it all. She's got a voice. She controls the masses, charisma. I mean, there are a lot of people with talent and a lot of people who can sing but you need that charisma component to make it all happen, to stand out above everyone else. That's what she has looking at this chart. Now talking about why transit wise, she's in the know and so popular. Well, during this time that Jupiter 
is transiting in Aries with Rahu, it's actually aspecting her Saturn Mercury in the second house. That's money. She's attracting great wealth and money right now. And let me tell you, it's not over for Taylor Swift because when Jupiter goes into Taurus, which this is going to happen next May, and Jupiter will be in Taurus from May of two, two, 2024 to May of 2025. You're going to see more of her and more excitement and even more money because at that point in time, Jupiter will aspect her Mars, her sun, and most of all, cast a beautiful trine to her Venus Rahu. And what I foresee for her at this point in time is creating more songs, more music. The creative potential will come in and she'll have more to create because transiting Jupiter will be activating her Venus Rahu in the third house of talent and creation and being creative. This is an amazing chart. And even when we do go to the fifth house, remember the fifth house is the house that also deals with creative talent. That is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter rules Pisces. Now I know it goes to the eighth, which gives her that charisma and that deep side to her that makes her so interesting. Kind of this is what her, what draws people to her. She's a person of depth and interest. There's something that you want to know more about her. And the ruler of the fifth going to the eighth, well, Jupiter, ruler of the fifth, actually by opposition is aspecting Saturn and Mercury which Saturn rules the third. So you see the connection between the fifth house ruler to the third house ruler. And that always creates great talent and the ability to perform, to mesmerize the audience. That's what she does. But she's highly talented and creative. And she's always coming up with new content. That's one thing that I think gives somebody longevity in the performing arts when they're able to create new things and things that sound different. You know, I always say the Beatles were, they had so many different sounds, but when somebody has all their songs sound alike, they don't, they don't last for long. And this is one of the gifts that Taylor Swift has. So watch how she's in the news. Watch how she has the ability to create massive wealth and change the economy in different cities. And most of all, to see in a chart how and why somebody is so talented and what their life is all about. That's what astrology can tell you. So with that, I want to tell you to go to my website. If you want to learn more about Vedic astrology, more about me, get a reading, go to galacticcenter.org. And while you're there, please look at my magazine. It's amazing. So my magazine is Joni Patrie's Astrology Insights. Sign up. It's only $9.99 a month to get all these articles that will inspire you. But if you're just wanting to try out what I'm all about, sign up for my free newsletter. Every single week, you'll have my predictions delivered to your email address. Don't miss it or you're going to be missing out. And remember, I teach Vedic astrology. If this is in some way inspired you, check out my university website all online. You can learn Vedic astrology and that is university of Vedic Thank you.